The axiom of choice is one of the more controversial topics of mathematics that, at first, seems incredibly straightforward. When I say choice, you might think about what color of chalk I choose to use, what game you're going to play, or what goals you might try and tackle in a given day. However, the axiomization of choice in mathematics requires a bit of rigor that obscures this intuitive idea. In order to get at this idea of choice, we should talk about functions and then the idea of a choice function. For the purposes of this video, we'll be sticking to the naive notion of a set. First, a function is a mapping from one set to another, where each element in the initial set or the domain is mapped to only one element in the terminal set or the codomain. Here are some examples and non-examples. If you're unsure of which is which, now would be a good time to stop and think about it before we move on. Now, a choice function is a function that operates on a collection of non-empty sets, where the function applied to any set gives an element in that set. Choice functions match our intuition behind choice, given the set of the set of pants, the set of shirts, and the set of shoes, and so forth. Choosing what to wear for the day is the same as taking each of those sets and using a function to send it to one of its elements. The next question you might ask might fall along the lines of, given any set, does a choice function always exist? And the answer is dependent on how you want to do math, literally. The statement, given any x of non-empty sets, there exists a choice function f defined on x is the axiom of choice, and within zermelo frankel set theory there are two camps, zf and zfc. zf is zermelo frankel set theory without the axiom of choice, and zfc is zermelo frankel set theory extended to the axiom of choice. A great portion of mathematicians use the axiom of choice despite its paradoxes, like the barnock tarski paradox, where you can cut a ball into two balls identical to the original or its predecessor, the Hausdorff Paradox, which says that you can remove a countable number of things from a sphere and then divide what's left over into three disjoint subsets of the sphere, A, B, and C, where A, B, and C, as well as B, union C, are all congruent to one another. The controversy around the axiom of choice essentially comes down to what do we want to be able to say in math. Sure, there are paradoxes that arise from the axiom of choice, but it also allows us to develop some widely utilized and accepted mathematical ideas. The choice to use the axiom of choice is up to the mathematician. Just as one may choose not to use the axiom of infinity, or the axiom of union, or the axiom of pairing, or any other zermelo frankel axiom, or any other axiom in whatever axiomatic system you are using. By omitting an axiom, you may remove the realization of paradoxes, but you also might remove the realization of something that is more generally understood as true. And that's all I have for you today. This video was actually requested by Hamad Mohammed through the comment section, so comments are a great way to get my attention about something you might want to hear about, or hear me talk about, or just feedback in general. So if you have any thoughts or suggestions, leave them down below. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more mathematics videos. As always, I am Nathan. This is Chuck, and I will see you next time.